So after um, leaving this for about two hours or so to, to dry, um, uncovered, I was gonna stop for the day, so I covered it, covered it with plastic, thin plastic, just uh, like the produce bag. I covered it so this section that we attached could merge and, and dry a little bit more consistently uh, together. What I'm gonna do now is decide where I want the face to be. So I'm just looking at the form here. Okay, this this looks like it could be a good good back, and I'll have this be the front. And that's just up to you. As for proportions, I divide the face up into different parts. I center the face with the eyes. So I'm gonna do a horizontal line for the eyes, and then a vertical line in the center. So I'm just gonna do a vertical line to divide it in the center. I need enough room for the, the mouth and the nose down here. So once I do this, this mark, I have this little uh, skull here that just as a reference, I like to focus on the cheekbones, the eye sockets, the jaw, and the chin. I'm just gonna push where the eyes would be, flatten it out, giving me a kind of that shape there. So I'm just gonna push the eyes in a little bit as I keep pushing into the eye. Right at the cross line is that, just to begin to uh, push that ridge in. Then right where the, the eye sockets are at, hold it and I push the nose out. Then go to the side and just make sure that jawbone is getting pushed out too. For the, for the sides, I just go to the profile and I split the head from the front of the ear and I divide it into four sections. The ear will be a, a third of the head. And then the top of the ear is aligned with the, um, our eyes. gonna add kind of like a mustache line right here. I'm just using a soft clay, like a little coil, and always scoring. Supporting it from the inside. Just gonna make sure it's well connected before I begin to shape it. So as I, I start adding things, um, I begin to think of uh, references. I like to uh, visualize uh, Mesoamerican aesthetics, um, and I like to uh, visualize how um, they take artistic license in um, facial features, and um, how all the facial features um, usually uh, uh, always have uh, meaning, uh, symbolism. So that was just the top, the top. Now I'm gonna add a little bit um, on the bottom. Um, I'm gonna go for a, kind of like a goatee. Start off with the coil comb. Just flatten it out a little bit. Fairly thin here, so uh, I'm not worried too much about the thickness of this. The, the chin right now is fairly thin. What is in the chin? So again, just score a little bit of water. It has a little too much water. I'm gonna add a little bit to the nose. I'm going to use the back of this needle tool to, uh, to do the nostril um, opening. So I'm just going to push that in and then I'm pushing out a little bit on there to uh, 
get the nostril going. Again, very, very crude. I'm gonna come back and uh, detail it, carve it. But right now, I'm just getting the overall, overall form. If we look at our eyes, they're usually uh, the center of our eye, the pupil is aligned to the outside of our uh, mouth. Just some reference lines here to uh, get my eyes going. I'm just gonna make one small sphere, one small ball that's about socket size, slightly bigger, close enough, and I'm just gonna cut that in half. I'll make it a little bit smaller, slightly smaller. So I'm gonna cut that in half and I'll have two equal, it's almost in half. That's the cool thing about clay, you know, I can just uh, change it if I don't like it. If I don't like it, I just change it up a little bit. So those are about the same size there. I'm gonna score a little bit on the eye socket. And again, I'm gonna push into it until I hear that, that sound, getting all those small air bubbles out and making sure it's a good connection. So it's starting to get somewhere here. So now the ears, getting my reference here. Similar idea with the eyes. Usually uh, this uh, old fire guy, well, what they'll has some earrings. Get those, and I'll start off. I usually make two of each. Same thing, same thing with the ear and the eye. Keep working on it, keep detailing it. The way I did the nostrils, I could also do with the ear hole. And I don't try to be like too, too concerned, too perfect, because then it takes the fun out of it when I'm trying to be too exact. So I try to have some fun with it. This is the brush I have with the little uh, flat, uh, flat uh, back that I sanded down. I'm just gonna push the top of the eyelid a little bit. So before this rim starts to get a lot uh, uh, stiffer, it started to get to that point where it's starting to stiffen up a little bit. I'm gonna add another coil um, to uh, uh, keep it from um, being the, the driest part here. So I'm just gonna add another coil. Another thing that we could do is if we don't wanna add that coil and we wanna keep working on it, um, by putting plastic on the rim, we keep it from I'm drying. If I wanted to keep adding coils to this to make it taller or do anything else, anywhere where I don't want it to dry, I would just put the plastic.
The head is way too big. Um, I don't I don't need it to be this big. So I'm gonna do a, a cut here. I'll cut in an angle so when, when it comes together it gives it equal equal thickness. Match the angles that I cut. And again, I didn't cut a lot. If I want to cut more, I'll cut more. Um, I'm going to see where I'm at here. Now it's going to come together and make sure the connections again are, are well done. So I'm noticing that the chin keeps coming down. I'm just going to do a temporary, uh, temporary shim just to support it. At this point, if, if it gets too soft, um, after all the, the working, I would, I would wait and let it stiffen up before I keep working on it. And before I shape it, I focus on connecting it, making that connection. Right by the cheeks usually our, our skin will sag a little bit, so I'll add a little bit of clay there, make that appear as if it's sagging skin. that is uh, prevalent and important so uh, it's okay to exaggerate it a little bit. Looking for uh, things I want to change, um, and one thing I just did is um, I cut off the back here. I just cut it off with the knife, um, and then the eye looks a little sunken in. I'm gonna do what I uh, did to, to the right eye, to the left eye. Um, I just get a coil, I just get a small coil, and I work on the eyelids. Just by doing that little detail, it makes it um, shift a lot. So it's one thing I'll focus on. So I'll keep doing this. Uh, I'll keep embellishing the, the surface here, keep adding on, doing both the reductive and additive process. That's the fun thing about clay, it has both of those processes there. And then come back to it and it should be somewhat uh, close to chocolate hard. And then I'll, I'll refine the carving. So, uh, after letting this uh, dry up a little bit, getting to that leather hard stage, I kept adding, taking away, doing that whole additive and subtractive uh, process to uh, get the, the facial structure like I wanted it to. I kept adding more clay to uh, uh, accent the cheekbones and the jaw bones. Then I started to uh, carve it a little bit, but if it's too wet, uh, the, the, that's not the best stage to uh, do detailed carving, so I let it stiffen up to uh, get to a uh, definite uh, leather hard stage. As for carving, um, I usually uh, sketch things out with a pencil um, and then I come back um, and if I, if I like the, the lines that I made, um, I carve them out a lot deeper. What I mean by sketch is, is lightly, um, lightly make lines and you could tell that the clay crumbs are not sticking to the surface. If the clay is, is, is being carved and then it sticks to the surface, if these clay crumbs are not coming off, that means it's still a little too wet. But when these clay crumbs are coming off, that's probably a good sign that, okay, I'm getting to a good dryness. Like this side is, for some reason, a little bit less dry, but I use the brush and I try not to mess with 
the lines after I make them if it's too wet because then now I'll, I'll cover uh, the line that I make again if I move around the clay so I'll make the lines let it stiffen up and then I'll come back and, and do more carvings. As for the eyes, I would just flatten out the surface a little bit. And again, I'm using this tool that I uh, made. Uh, it's just very basic, flatten out the, the back of the brush. And it's pretty cool because as soon as I make a, the lines or um, take away, I could just brush it off. Again, I'm just thinking of the eyelids go to cover the, the eyeball and, and the eye socket. This is a good place to, to have like references and just paying attention to how the eyes are. If I want to make some straight lines, this is a pretty cool uh, tool that I that I use to uh, create some some line work. The deeper the line or, or the groove is, the more glaze will, will go in there and it'll have more of a contrast with the surface and, and the line work. And after, I'll just kind of a wet sponge, squeeze it out. When I use a sponge, it brings out the sand of the clay. So if I don't want that, that rough sand look, I could just rub it with my hand or get the, the plastic rib and smooth that out again if I want that smooth feel or smooth look. So I just keep working this and then come back to it and carve some more lines on it to uh, give it that wrinkle look get it to this place where all the carving is done and then it gets fired. This has been fired and it's at the bisque stage and it's ready to be glazed and that's the next step I'll show you guys. I'm at the point where the clay is at um, chocolate hard now and I've, I've added everything I wanted to add. I'm just cleaning it up to uh, call it complete for this stage and I'm getting rid of all uh, the clay crumbs. So there's some, some clay crumbs that I wet the brush a little bit and then I just go in there and clean them up. And this is also cleaning up my line work, just making it smooth, get rid of any, any sharp lines because those won't go away. In order for this to uh, dry slowly, I like to dry things slowly. Even though it's a small scale sculpture, um, I did add some things later on in the, um, in the drying process. So what I do is I loosely cover it um, I just loosely cover it like this and uh, every uh, every few hours or so or at overnight after after the night I'll, I'll uncover it I don't want to allow a lot of moisture to uh, build up inside the bag it'll start looking dry on on the um, edges and then eventually it'll all look bone dry and then it's uh, ready to be fired I hope you enjoyed this um, this process um, and um, I'll uh, look forward to uh, seeing how this turns out.